So this is going to be my second attempt at uh, carving a, a tailor's dummy in sort of quarter scale. Uh, I've made my corrections, which is uh, moving the armhole forward, which is the main problem. And I've widened the waist so it's not quite so wasp-like. Uh, the stand uh, I've changed to this tripod uh, style, which is you normally get tripod legs on, on these rather than turned ones. They would have had a, a little wing up here, a little, little thumb screw. Um, to heighten and lower the, the body form itself uh, to get it the right height for the person you're making the dress for uh, so you could get the hemline at the correct point which uh, Victorian Edwardian times would have been dragging along the floor. Uh, I've started by uh, drilling all the holes in the uh, blank and cutting the, the neck off at the correct angle. I've also turned the um, arm caps which are in uh, old black walnut which is actually quite tough uh, it takes the edge off your tool very quickly if you're turning end grain uh, I thought maybe I should have done it in face grain but you'd get a bit of tear out and try and clean that up uh, without losing the detail it wouldn't have been very easy I've also made the, uh, the collar um, I'm going to do the same finial as I did for the first one uh, and the centre I've done in one piece rather than two. So I can make the finial and then I can draw around this again as to do the first one and mark the neck correctly and then bandsaw this out. I've started turning the finial. Uh, I've turned the um, spigot that fits into the top of the stand like that. And the ball as well so it fits into the socket on the collar piece. Now I've had to file a little bit off the inside of here, uh, just so it sits at an angle. So when it goes on, instead of it sitting square, it'll sit like that. So when I pop the, um, the body form on, turn that around. It sits in like that and you don't get a gap then when it spins. So the next thing to do is to just turn the actual finial itself which will be the same as the one I did last time.
I've uh, adjusted the pattern slightly so it corresponds with the, where the collars sit in. Uh, so the next thing will be uh, just bandsawing it out. Uh, it looks okay this time, uh, nothing to glue back on fortunately. Uh, so next thing is to draw on all the high points and start rounding it off. I started on the stand itself now, this is the centre. Uh, I've turned the bottom bit where the legs go to size and cut three flats on it where the legs are fitted. Uh, I've cut the legs out. Um, I tried doing it on the electric fret saw but it, it doesn't like this stuff at all. It takes the edge off the blade straight away and it just starts smoking and burning through so I, uh, I, I had to cut them out on the bandsaw which is why they're a bit rough. Uh, they'll be cleaned up and shaped later on anyway so it doesn't actually matter. Um, I regret using this stuff now, I think I should have used Sycamore and ebonised it, but uh, I'm using it now so uh, I'll persevere with it. Uh, I've cut one of the dovetails and fit it in there and it's quite a nice snug fit. So I'll do the other two and uh, then take them out, put this back on the lathe, uh, turn the stem uh, so it fits in the hole there and uh, then probably start on the, the body form then. So that's the legs dovetailed in. Um, that one actually is leaning this way a little bit, but uh, it doesn't matter, it looks fine. Uh, they need a little bit more sanding with a finer paper. But the next thing to do is take the legs off, 
pop this back in the lathe and make that look like that. Uh, that's the stand finished now. Uh, I've just put this little bit of decoration on the bottom. Um, like I say, it's, it is a copy of a, um, an old leg. Um, so now that's done, the, all the walnut can be polished and then carved the body form itself. So this is the same procedure as the first one, uh, just rounding everything off from high point to high point just to get the basic shape. Uh, the only difference is this one's been cut correctly.
done most of the shaping and then I've just uh, give it a rough sanding with some 80 grit just to um, get a fresh look at it, get rid of all the tool marks uh, and I can see it properly now. Uh, still needs a bit of work, uh, I don't really like carving after I've been sanding because the, obviously the grit gets into the wood and it takes the edge off your tools but sometimes you need to do it. Uh, it's a lot better than the first one, uh, the back's a lot better shape, it's not as such a ridiculous angle there. Um, and the proportions are just better. I still need to do a bit more work. I need to take it up to that line. I didn't want to go too much straight away in case it wasn't uh, wasn't quite right. Um, I want to take some of that curve out, uh, flan it off a little bit. Um, it's a little bit of a bump there on the hip that needs to go. And the neck needs thinning out a little bit. It's still not quite to the line yet. So it's coming along. It looks a lot better than the other one. I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, so I'll stick it back on the uh, face plate and um, just try and get it looking a bit better. So I'm happy with the shape now. So I've sanded it down to 320 grit. Uh, the stand's nice. I like the colour of the stand as well, the walnut. Uh, this is older again, which I used on the first one. Uh, it does carve well, it's, it's like cherry, so it's, it's a perfectly good wood for carving. Um, so the next thing I'll do is I'll oil it with a, a natural oil 